because you are registered or hoping to be registered for the flight science degree program that starts on Monday next week. Is that the case? If that is not the case, raise your hand. Okay, so everybody's here because you want to fly airplanes at Reedley College. Okay, right. Uh, one person's like, yeah, all right, sweet. All right, so uh, just in case you don't know, uh, last time I did this, I had people here. Uh, if you've been working with financial aid, you're either dealing with Chris Cortez or Jessica Silva at the financial aid office. Does anybody who needs to talk to somebody in financial aid not have those names? Raise your hand if you need to talk to financial aid, but you've never heard of those names before. Okay. And hopefully you probably talk, have been talking to in some manner or gone and seen an academic counselor, either Ms. Maria Silver, who is different than Jessica Silver. Jessica Silver is in the financial aid office. Ms. Silva, Ms. Gutierrez, or Ms. Vang. Is there anybody who's been seeing it, talking to an academic counselor that's not on that list? Okay, who is it? Oh, Delia Gutierrez. Okay, and uh, Mr. Oh, yeah, okay, first name's Case. All right, that's cool. There's no law that you have to see a particular counselor. All right, I don't, you don't need to look if I'm not spying that. I was just more curious than anything else. Does anybody need to see a counselor and you haven't been able to get a hold of one? Ms. Maria Silva is back in the office. She had part of the summer off. I believe you, but I don't know who that is. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, usually what I do at this time I ask people what the, what they like to be called and what what do, what do they what do they want to fly airplanes for? Like uh, Lexi, do you want to grow up and be an airline pilot? Okay, so just so you know, you can do both: you can grow up and be a pilot. They're mutually. If you've already grown up, you can back off a couple of notches to allow yourself to become a pilot. I'm just kidding. So uh, here, I'll start off. Uh, I prefer, uh, it's a long story, but I prefer if you call me Mr. Johnson or Professor Johnson. Uh, I'm going to be your mentor, I'm going to be your instructor, and I'm going to give you lots of good advice, and I'm going to help you do fantastic things. And it's not that I won't be friendly, but we're not going to be friends like going out and drinking and friends that do you favors. That's not what I'm here for. I'm, I'm going to be friendly because I like to be friendly, but I'm going to be your instructor at all the time. So uh, come on in. I'm afraid that uh, some people get the wrong idea. I've done it in the past where I tell people they can call me by my first name. And it doesn't work out because the last day of class is say, hey, John, I, I, I got I to gotta write this term paper for this other class so you can give me a day late and let me, take, let me turn this project in a day late or you can let me take the final exam a day late. And I go, no. And then they go, well, you're my friend. How come you won't do me that favor? So just letting you know. So I prefer Mr. Johnson or a Professor Johnson. My hometown is a little tiny place uh, southeast of Fresno. You may have heard of it. It's called Reedley. If you, uh, if you drive down Reed Avenue past the river towards the cemetery, just before you get to the cemetery, you'll see a retirement home. I think it's called Palm Village. That's where I was born. It actually was a hospital back then. Went to Reedley High. Went to Reedley College. Stuff like that. Uh, I was in a branch of the service. I was in I was in the United States Air Force for eight years. I got out in '92. Does anybody remember '92? Half the class. Okay, great. And my career goals are to be the most awesome person I can and assist p other people that want to become professional aviators. I want people to pay me money to do that. And right now, I have that job. So if I already have your na your phone number and address and stuff, I don't need it. They're just give me your name. So you don't have to have that big of uh, an introduction. You could just say, my name is David Jackson. I'm from uh, Madison, Wisconsin. So I was never in the service, and I want to fly Airbus A380s. You can have it that simple if you want. You want to go first? Okay, so you know by the time you become a commercial airline pilot, well, actually, you'll be one in about four years, in less than four years, you know that, okay. I was just saying, by the time you, by the time you retire, they'll be down to one airline pilot, and they'll probably, by the, before you retire, they'll start producing air, air commercial airliners with no pilots. The good news is there's a big enough shortage that that's going to have very, very little impact on you. How about you, sir?
You want to fly Airbus A380s? Do you know what an Airbus A380 is? Sweet. They're big old honking airplanes. Oh. A triple seven? You they would you would you would lower your standard for a triple seven. Okay. How about you, Mr. Flores? What's your name? Seven forty seven dash eight hundreds, would that be okay? You know what seven forty seven is? You know what a dash eight hundred is? It's like the biggest one. Is there is there a bigger one? Is there forty seven dash nine hundred? 800, okay, all right. Well, you need, to, you need to talk to David then. Thanks, Greg Thomas. I'm going to be in Iowa. You want to make money flying airplanes. That is a reasonable goal. So if, if somebody said you could make money flying uh, a, a little two-seat airplane at 100 miles an hour, that fits within your goals, or are you thinking you want to fly jets? Or? No, actually, uh, FedEx, Grand Caravans. Okay, Grand Caravans. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody know what a FedEx Grand Caravan is? Does anybody not know? Okay, a, a caravan is a single-engine airplane made by Cessna. In Wichita, I believe they make them in Wichita. It's got a somewhere between a 500 and a 1500 horsepower engine. It's probably closer to 1500. It's got a big propeller on it. If you set it up like an airline, it'll fit 19 seats, or you can set it up for cargo. And you only have to have one person flying it, so you never have to be the co-pilot. Huh? A lot of people work their way up because usually those are 135 taxi operations and you don't have to be have an airline pilot certificate or 1,500 hours to do it. Yeah. So, how about you? You want to give it a whack? Okay, do you know how the CHP does their pilot hiring system? Oh, I believe that that's what you want to do. My question is, do you know the CHP's hiring system? Oh, you do. Okay, all right. I want to hear about that later. Okay. So you want to fly helicopters or airplanes? Airplanes for the CHP? How many airplanes does the California Highway Patrol have? More than one? Multiple? All right. Okay, all right. Do they do strafing runs? They don't, they don't have machine guns bolted onto their airplanes, do they? Okay. Okay, all right. All right. Next. Do you know what kind of airliner you want to fly? Or just as long as it's big and still made out of aluminum, you'll be happy? So you don't want to fly a carbon-based airplane like the 787? Uh, what? If it's big, okay. So your criteria doesn't have to be made out of aluminum, but as long as it's big. What's your definition of big? At least 200,000 pounds or at least 500,000 pounds? You haven't thought of this in terms of how heavy the airplane is. Do you know what an Airbus A380 is? Okay. Uh, uh, an Airbus A380, fully loaded, 1.3 million pounds. <laughs> the pilots and, and, and the lead flight attendant all have to get a hormone shot before takeoff every time they go flying because it's such a big airplane. I mean, don't worry. They got testosterone and estrogen, you know, epipins instead of adrenaline for bee stings. They got them. They got them in first class just for the pilots. Oh, okay, sorry. Next. Have you seen that kid in his early 20s who has a YouTube channel and he's been flying a uh, Cessna caravan around as an air taxi pilot? He's like 20. I don't know if he's even. Yeah, but somebody's got to pay for that. I mean, talking about getting a job flying around in Hawaii. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, cool. MV-11. Who, who, do you know an airline that flies the MV-11? Okay, cool, sweet. What city in Mexico? Ensenada? Is that on the coast? It's on, okay, all right, sweet. Thanks. Go ahead. All right, so you guys are going to be arm wrestling and, and stuff like that. No, not in here. Okay, all right. You want to be a flight instructor? What's wrong with you? You mean as a career goal? Yes. All right, I was making a joke. You're the third person in my entire life have I ever heard come out of their mouth prior to entering flight training saying, I want to learn how to fly so I can be a flight instructor. Okay, all right. I was just to be clear, I was not one of those three people. I fell into teaching 32 years after my day of birth, and I've had a good time since. But all right. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. So you already know who I am. So please interrupt me as we go along. If uh, if I'm facing the screen or something and I can't see you. Just say, yo, yo, Mr. Johnson, or I don't know, you could use some other verbiage besides that, and I'd be happy to turn around. So when it, whenever you have the question, interrupt me. Um, you're going to have to come up with, you have to prove uh, either one of two things. You're either a U.S. citizen, and you have to do that by either having a valid government-issued photo ID, such as a driver's license, and I used the word valid. And then you either have to have your original certificate or a certificate or a certified copy, not the one you made on a Xerox machine 23 years ago. It's got to be a certified copy. You can either have those two things, or you can have a valid U.S. passport. And you're going to need to bring that to the first day of class on Monday. Can anybody tell me when is the first flight class start on Monday morning next week? 7 o'clock, yeah. And it's not going to be in this room. It's going to be you're going to – you can – you're going to walk through the double doors, and there's a classroom on the other side of this wall with computers. So I literally have to see the originals, and I have to make copies of them. Come on in. You looking for somebody? Okay, it's a dollar. I, you have to give me a dollar for every one of those posters you put up. You don't carry cash. Well, I'll take a check. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Good, have a good time. Um, I harass people. I don't even know. Uh, so if you're not a U.S. citizen, you needed to, hopefully, before now, you've gone onto the TSA website and, and done the application uh, to, to do flight training in the United States, not as a U.S. citizen. Is there anybody that's going to have any trouble with this issue for Monday? Because if there is, you might want to see me after class. There is a, there, On one of the handouts that I sent out, one of the emails, there's a place for... Uh, and you can't find a certified copy. Well, okay, see you after class. We'll talk about it more after class. Hey, John, come on in. No, it starts at 1 o'clock. Don't sweat it. Pull up a chair. I already have your name and your phone number, so all I need is your name. Thank you. Okay, a valid medical certificate. You also need to bring your original FAA medical certificate, certificate to class on Monday so I can also Xerox it and keep it in our files. Is there anybody that's going to have trouble bringing your FAA medical certificate with you on Monday? No, the documents you received said that you have to have your medical certificate on the first day of class. It says you have to show your instructor on the first day of class. Great news is I have a list of FAA-approved doctors, and after this brief is over, you can make phone calls and get an appointment for tomorrow. Yes? 
as long as it's third class or second class or first class, it doesn't matter. It's just the school is not willing to let you stay in a class that at that moment you can't prove you're medically qualified to pass otherwise. Because if you don't pass your medical, then you're going to get an F for the course. You won't like that, will you? I won't like it. Everyone won't. The school will ask me, why did you let this young man stay in class? And I'll say, I don't know. I'm talking about Mr. V. Akanya. He's not a young man. I'm just Can I make age discrimination jokes? I need to look that up. I think I don't think that's listed in the college catalog. Well, age, well, in the college catalog, you can't make derogatory harassment remarks based on gender, national origin, religious affiliation, ethnic background, disability, veteran status, but I don't think age is in there. So that means you can call me a fat old man. No, you can't say man. Just say a fat old fart. Yeah, there you go. That's within the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to give you ideas. Okay. So uh, see me after class. If you have a concern that you can't do both of these on the first day, correction, see me after this meeting is over, and we'll discuss what your options are from here forward. Okay. If you're using VA benefits, I highly recommend that you don't drop your classes in the middle of the semester until you've had a chance to talk to me, the program coordinator, Talk to an academic counselor. Probably, if Sue Vang is actually the better person to talk to. She no, knows more about VA issues. Has anybody not heard of Sue Vang, V-A-N-G? She's absolutely awesome. Okay. All right. And if you're using financial aid, you ought to talk to them. Uh, but this really goes, you can cross the word VA benefits and just say anybody. I highly recommend that if you're thinking of dropping classes, that you come and see me first. And I'm going to say, you know, if you drop one class and you go below 12 credits and you're getting your federal financial aid, that could impact how much financial aid you get. If you're using VA benefits and you drop below 12 credits, it might impact, it probably will impact, your housing allowance. So it, it, no matter who you are or how you're covering the expenses of school, I highly recommend you just don't get upset one night and go online because through halfway through the semester, through the first nine weeks, you can go online and talk to no one, and you can go in there and drop your classes. I highly discourage you from doing that until you talk to some several people here on campus. And I'm really, really happy for you to call me at 7.59 at night. Hey, Mr. Jonathan, my dog died, and I'm so depressed I can't fly anymore, so I'm going to go online and drop all my classes today. And I'm not trying to make light of someone's dog passing away. But... And let's get through. Let's get through this current issue. All right. Also, there are some valid reasons, especially if you're using VA benefits, you need to keep going to class. Again, if you think you need to stop going to class, you need to come see me, and let's talk about it first. Uh, if you are using VA benefits, it only covers a class twice. So if you fail a class, the VA will pay for it a second time, but they won't pay for it a third time. But that brings up a really good point, which is not on here. Let's see if I can do this with my little gizmo here. I want it white. So, no repeat classes. In spring of 2019. So I'm writing it on here, so it's, I'm recording it here, is right now, Reedley College is not planning on a new set of students coming in in January. What that means for you, starting in August, is if, that if you fail a course and you need to repeat it, we're not probably not going to have it on the schedule for January. You're probably going to have to wait until August. So I'm not trying to tell you that because I think you're going to flunk. I'm just letting you know that this is part of this thing called flight training at Reedley College, we aren't up and running at full steam yet. And until we get full steam and we have a gazillion people trying to get in every semester, we're probably going to just offer the classes a startup once a year. So if you fail a class this semester in, Je in December, you won't be able to start take it over again until August of 19. Does anybody have any questions about that? Now, there's some small possibility 27 people will want to start the program and we'll start that up, but at the moment, that's not the plan. And of course, uh, if, you, if you're a VA student, you've got to maintain a C average. How fast can I go through this? 
Uh, if you're using VA benefits, you need to talk to Sue Vang or talk to me about how your, your housing allowance might get delayed and not show up until October or November. And uh, you also need to talk to me or Sue Vang about your housing allowance between the semesters. And so I'm not going to go through this because less than half of you are using VA benefits. This is important here, though, about participating in class once a week. The college has a thing about that, too. So in your flying class, Flight 105, you're going to come here to the classroom next door, Classroom 3, the first Monday and the first Wednesday of the semester at 7 o'clock. And then that class, your flying class, is only going to occur at the Fresno Yosemite Airport. But once a week, you have to demonstrate that you are, quote, attending class. So in your flying lab, one, sorry, I said 107 earlier, in your flying lab, 105, in 105, your flying lab, once a week, you're going to go in there and you're going to take a one-question quiz to demonstrate that you are in that class and participating. Because if you stop going to school for a couple of weeks, the VA wants to know and they, if you're using VA benefits, and they might dock your housing allowance. And the college wants to know, are you actually attending class? Even if the weather's bad or you get mononucleosis or the airplane is broken and you don't fly for three weeks, this way, whenever the college asks me, they're going to say, hey, John Johnson, who's in that flight course that's not coming to class? I can look in there, and if everybody's done the once-a-week quiz... And here's the good news. That once-a-week quiz is going to be a question out of the topics that you're learning in ground school and simulator class and in flight. So it's not going to be terrible. And it'll be open book. But I need to be able to tell the college that you're going to school to flying class at least once a week. All right. So this was kind of written for people prior to today. Uh, getting your financial aid done right away. We don't have to talk about all that stuff. And there's Ms. Silva's phone numbers, but if you're talking to her, you're already talking to her. Okay, so let's talk about what you got to do this semester. you got to take at least these first three classes uh, if you're flying with us. There are a couple of students that are working on their pilot certificate outside of the college. Um, so they don't need to take Flight 105, which is the flying, and they don't need to take 107, which is the simulator class. In case you haven't looked at your schedule, Flight 101 is the ground school. It's Mondays and Wednesdays. It's only two hours a week, or it's only two 50-minute periods. It's every Monday, Wednesday, except for the holidays published in the schedule of classes, every Monday, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. If you also take uh, History of Aviation, it's Tuesday, Thursdays. I think I got it on here. It's Tuesday, Thursdays at 8 o'clock. So if you're taking ground school in aviation history, it means every Monday through Thursday, going to be in this building around the corner in classroom three. Okay. The only two times for 105, the flying class, it's all done at the Fresno Yosemite Airport at JB Aeronautics, 4955 North Anderson, or maybe it's 4595, darn it. It's in one of those pieces of paper I sent you. It's right next to the FAA. Oh, everybody knows where the FAA is. Don't worry, you will. Um, except for you're only going to physically be here this Monday at 7 and this Wednesday at 7, and then you're never going to be here in this building for your flying class. And then most of you are going to be taking 107, which is the simulator class. Now, there's the, I'm going to spend a little time here, is the simulator class. There are three of them. The downside is... There's 107, Mondays, 9 to uh, 10, 20. And then there's the 107 that is Mondays, uh, 11. Mm -hmm. 10.30 to 11.50. And then there's the 107, which is really funky. It's really Fridays from 8 to 9.20. But these time periods here, this, i got to put it this way, this way is the first two weeks uh, is after. You know what, this isn't working out at all. I'm trying to, I was trying to think of a way to do this. Question? All right, let's try it this way. The 107... It's Monday through Friday, 
9 to 1020, the first two weeks. Then, Mondays from 9 to 1020 only. So that's one of them. So that first two weeks, you're going to end up coming here ten times. Every day you're going to come here besides ground school. And if you're taking history, history. Whenever you get out of class at 8.50, you're going to walk over to the other side of the building. I'll show you where it is today before we're done. And you're going to take a simulator class Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the first week. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the second week. And then after the second week is over, it's only going to be Mondays at 9. What we're doing during that first two weeks is we're going to get ahead of your flying lessons. You're going to do actually nine flying lessons in the simulator. So by the time you get to the airplane, you'll have nine or maybe ten lessons under your belt. So you're going to be way ahead of anybody who just jumped in an airplane and started taking flying lessons. I've done this before, and it usually shaves off about one hour of flying for every time you have a simulator lesson. So if you do these simulator lessons, you'll probably get your private pilot certificate 10 hours faster than you would have otherwise. That's a very approximate number. You're also going to do a simulator class in the second semester. So that's one class. It's the 107 that starts at 9 a.m. Then there's another 107. It's also Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but it's 1030 to 1150. Also, only the first two weeks. Then... It's only Mondays, 10.30 to 11.50. So those classes look really, 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 really similar. Third class of 107, which some of you may be signed up for. It's not because I don't think you know what your schedule is, but because although up until Monday there were 17 or 18 students signed up, on Monday students who didn't have all of their funds lined up got dropped in accordance with uh, Document 16, Flight Science Payment and Refund System. I can't remember the exact name of the document. I don't like it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I like it. I dislike it a whole lot. And I know there's two or three of you in this room that dislike it way, way, way more than I do. However, there is a California state law. It's a California state law that once instruction begins, no community college can drop you from, for lack of payment which means we would have to let you go to the, let's say you put th half of that $6,800 down, you put $3,400 down and you owed the college 3400 bucks. If it got halfway this, through the semester and you didn't come up with that other 3400 bucks, we couldn't class and we couldn't tell you you couldn't go to class even though class was in an airplane. So the college is unwilling to risk you not being able to fly because we can't, the college can't risk that 3400 bucks. So what the college decided to do long before we met you is that if you don't have all your money lined up from federal financial aid or cash on deposit or VA benefits or all of this added together, then you were going to get dropped this first this week before school started. Now, you still have until the last day to add, which is August the 24th, to fix all that. You can come to ground school. You can go to simulator class. I want you to come to the flying class that first two days at 7 o'clock on Monday and Wednesday next week. But you can't get back into Flight 105 until that financial situation is straightened out. And that's up to the business office and the financial aid office. So I'm not, I'm not really happy about it, but financial aid and the business office and myself and our VA school official, we all got together on Monday and reviewed every single student. And if you got dropped, it's because at that moment, all your finances were in the line. So that's why we did it. Monday morning at 8.01 a.m. If you came to class at 7 o'clock on Monday next week, we can't drop you if you come up with all your money. Tell me how you would feel. You got halfway through the semester, you had $3,400 put down, and you couldn't get the other $3,400.
we, we, we thought about it this way. You just pay as you go, and you spent 3400 bucks, and then now you have to stop. You'd get an F in the course. You'd have 15 hours of flying. You'd stop flying, and then you'd owe the college $3,400. Guess what? You can't go to college at Reed College until you come up with that 3400 bucks you owe us. It, it would be everyone would be even more happy than the way we are right now. So I'm going to stop dwelling on this. In any case, this there's there are seven simulators. We have seven simulators, so I can only have seven people in each of these. And we cracked and went over 14, so I had a third section opened. But now I think we're going to be below 14, and I know exactly what's going to happen on Monday. My dean is going to send me an email and say, John, I'm looking at those three Flight 107s, and altogether there's only 12 people in all three of them. Which one of those three do you want me to cancel? Because I'm going to cancel one of them and force the students into the other two. I, I'm predicting that that's going to occur. Well, that would be my preference because no one had... The problem is... When I first put this out, uh, that third one was just was started uh, started at uh, at noon, and nobody wanted the noon one. Everybody wanted most people wanted into the nine. People were willing to accept the ten thirty, and nobody wanted into the noon. So I thought, okay, it's because people have things to do in the afternoon. So I changed that to this weird one. At least after the first four weeks, it's Fridays at eight. I know it's not that much fun the first four weeks. So literally. I'd like to let, let you tell me what your input is. I'm not you tell me. I'd like your opinion, your influence. Which of these would do you think we need? Which of these can you absolutely not go to? So we'll start it off that way. Which of these can you absolutely not go to? Okay, so Mr. F has told us that uh, he would like to see the Tuesday, Thursday one dropped of these three. Is there anyone else that agrees with him? That if you, that, okay, a couple of people. Three, okay. Four people agree with that one. Is there anybody that thinks we ought to drop the Monday, Wednesday, Friday at night, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10.30? Okay. Well, good news is, right? Got, so I've still got one opening in the night. Yeah, I'd have to look. I don't, I don't have that data on me. Okay, so the consensus is, it's not actually consensus, is that if, if we had to drop one of these three, we would drop the funny one on Tuesday, Thursdays at 7. If that doesn't agree with what's in your brain, you need to raise your hand and speak up right now. Okay. Don't worry. I will send people an email. If you are registered for this one, before I close it, it will probably be in the next day or two, I'm going to email everybody that's in this weird one and say, I'm looking at closing this one and you going into one of these other two. Now, it could be that a lot of people get all their finances all lined up here in the next few days, and we're, we have more than 14 students, and even if there's only one in one of them, I'm going to have to leave it open. So it's possible that won't occur. So thank you for listening to that big, horrendous stuff right there. All right. So the way the system works... The way it works, here we go, is you're going to do ground school, and you're going to do simulator class, and you're going to fly. And if you don't know, because I haven't told you, I've done this before. The last job I had for eight years straight was I ran two junior college flight training programs where the college didn't do anything, and they contracted all of it to a helicopter flight school. And I was the guy at the helicopter flight school that made it all work. I wrote all the classes. I put the schedules together. I, found the, the, I taught the flight instructors how to be college professors. I did all that stuff. So I know how all this stuff works. The 12 years before that, I worked at a school called Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, and I was an academic instructor in the pilot degree program, a four-year bachelor's degree, and I also taught ground school at the flight line, as well as just academic classes, like I taught jet engines for pilots and airframe systems for pilots and aviation safety and stuff like that. 
So what I saw across that 12 years, some things at that, that university that could have been done better, and I got to, I was very fortunate, because my boss at the for-profit flight school I worked at, he, he decided that the more successful students were, the more money the company would make. So I got to spend money making the system better because the company would make more money if we had less people flunk out. Because if you flunk out that first or second semester, the company doesn't get money from you during the third or fourth or fifth or sixth semester. Do you see what I mean? So the boss let me do a lot of things, and I tried out a lot of things, and some of them worked and some of them didn't. What does work, fitting it into a collegiate system, is for you to be doing these three things. Now, the, there is some desynchronization. You're going to learn some stuff in ground school before you need to know it in flight and before you need to know it in the simulator. But it's better if you get the academic knowledge before you need it in the aircraft. So the ground school is going to stay kind of ahead of what you're, where you're going to be in the flight. Now, the reason why you're going to do simulation, there's two reasons why you're going to do ten simulator lessons that first two weeks is number one, that first two weeks, you can drop your classes and get a 100% refund. So if we started flying you at Fresno Yosemite Airport at a couple hundred dollars per flying lesson, and you got two or three lessons in and you dropped, you'd get all your money back, and the college would still have to pay to lease the airplanes and pay the flight instructor. So you will not fly until the third week of the semester, on or just after August 23rd, 27th. That is a Monday. The first Monday of the third week of school is the first day every, anybody's going to fly. So the likelihood of your first flight at Reedley College being that during that next seven days, between August 27th and that next seven days, unless the weather's bad or you're sick or your instructor's sick. So the question becomes, how, what can we do so that when you get to that first flight lesson, you learn the most possible? I have taught a lot of people to operate machines, including cars, most people, whether it's airplanes or helicopters or cars or simulators for that matter, people get overwhelmed because they're trying to do 27 things at once. So that's what happens in little airplanes. So what we're going to do in the simulator is we're only going to try to do one or two or three things at once. And then the next day we're going to do, try to do two or three or four more things in the next day and so on. So by the time you get to the airplane in your third week, you're like, oh, yeah. I rotate that knob, that big red knob, to the fullest tank, whichever has the most amount of fuel. And I reach over here and I turn these two red buttons to turn on the electrical system. And there is a button right here that I push to talk on the radio. And I'm going to have an airport diagram, and I'm going to be practicing listening to the radio and talking on the radio and a whole bunch of other stuff, which I'm not going to go into. So by the time you get to the airplane, you have a reasonable idea of what to do. The good news is there's somebody sitting next to you that will never, ever let you do something you're not supposed to do. Question. Would it be, is it recommended you set up your own simulator? This is what I would suggest you do. Wait until after the first two weeks of classes are over, and then let's talk about where you are in your simulator training, and then let's talk about whether you need more practice than what you're going to get. There are some pros and cons, and we'll talk about them, and then you'll get to decide what you want to do. I'll just give you my opinion. Because what you do outside of school, you know, I'm hoping you don't commit felonies and stuff, but it's really kind of my business. And don't worry, we'll talk about felonies here pretty soon. So you're going to go to ground school, and this ground school is going to be two hours a week plus six hours at home. And you're going to go, what do you mean? We're in class two hours a week. What's this six hours? There's a three to one ratio. It's a standard at colleges. For every hour of lecture, you're expected to spend three hours outside of class doing stuff, whether that's reading the assignment, doing the homework, studying for tests, writing that 27-page term paper you're going to have to do this semester. I'm just kidding. There's no term papers in flight. I hope that's going to be okay. No term papers. No essays. Just cram things into your brain so you can be a fantastic pilot. That's all we're going to do. In any case, I'll show you on the first day of school how that six hours is going to play out. But that's what's going to happen. And that's for an average learner 
who learns at an average speed. So that means half of you will have to spend more than six hours a week. Everybody is different. It doesn't mean you're smart. It doesn't mean you're dumb. It means that you're, the speed at which you learn new information is just different. Then, after the first two weeks, we're going to sim for an hour and 20 minutes per week. Plus, we're going to do about one hour of prep outside of simulator class. So when you show up for simulator class, you're going to be able to know what's going on and get a whole bunch of it. Don't get me wrong. I think that flying is ridiculously fun. I think it's ridiculously exciting. There's only a handful of things that I would rather do instead of fly, and four of them I can't even tell you what they are because of the college restrictions. Thank you for laughing, Mr. F. I appreciate that. I was just making a joke. There's three things. But, uh, but if you want to become a professional pilot, and it's okay if you don't want to get all your certificates in this program, this program is designed for and will be run as the plan is you're going to become a flight instructor and you're going to become a airline pilot or a corporate jet pilot or a crop master or something like that. That's the way everything is going to go. And then you're going to fly. You're going to fly. You're going to fly 30 hours dual instruction. That dual means with the instructor plus five hours of solo means without the instructor if you're flying in flight 105. At the airport, it's 2 to 4 p.m. You're actually going to get there at about 145. And for 15 minutes, you're going to make sure the airplane has gas. If not, you're going to call for gas or gas truck. You're going to check. You may check the weather. You may check notams. That's notice to airmen. And you're going to have. You're going to do a visual inspection of the aircraft and make sure it's ready to fly. So that at two o'clock, when your instructor is done with the previous student, now you're going to spend some time with the instructor doing a pre-flight briefing. You're going to discuss what you're going to do, and then you're going to go out to the aircraft. And at the beginning, they're going to do a visual inspection of the airplane because they don't trust you because you don't know what you're doing, and they don't want to die. So then you'll get in the airplane, and you'll generally fly between 1.0 to 1.4 hours. There's a little meter called a Hobbs meter, and it, it clicks over every tenth of an hour, not by the minute, every tenth of an hour. But it's pretty common is 1.2 to a 1.3 hours. Then you got to turn the engine off, and you got to push the airplane, you got to tie it down, and then your instructor, they already ran inside to go to the restroom and get a drink of water. You come inside, and the instructor, you're going to have a debriefing. By the time you get done with that debriefing, it's going to be about 4 o'clock. So you may get a 1.2 hour in the airplane, and you may get 0.4 with the instructor, and so these two things together is 1.6 hours with the instructor, and 1.2 of that is with the airplane. But guess what? It took you two hours and 15 minutes to do it. And that doesn't count driving to the airport and driving back from the airport. So you're going to do this approximately twice a week. And guess what? So this took two hours and 15 minutes. And just for fun, we're going to say you're in Reedley. So that's an hour and 30 minutes round trip driving. And we're going to do an hour of prep. So that's four hours and 45 minutes times two. That equals about nine hours per week is what it works out to be. If the weather gets bad and you don't fly for a week, what do you think you're going to do next week when the weather gets good? You're going to still fly two hours? No, you're going to fly three. It, it, a lot of it varies because your instructor may not be able to fly all of their students four times that week. But your flying rate is going to go up for the next week or two or three and get you back on track. Because literally what's going to happen, and this is also very important, I'm going to keep track of it, you're going to keep track of it, and gosh darn it. So here is mid-August. You know what, I'm just going to erase all this and start over again. Don't worry, we're going to take a break pretty quick here. So here's the semester. Mid-August, the semester starts, and the last day of finals is December 14th. So mid-December, guess what? For two weeks. For two weeks. And 
we're going to back up a month to mid-November. The plan is going to be, the plan is going to be, the plan is going to be for you to be done with your 30 hours with your instructor and your five hours of solo time by the, before Thanksgiving, by mid-November. And so that gives us a 30-day buffer of lousy weather, you getting sick, the airplane being broke, your instructor getting sick, or whatever, so that you can get done by the end of the semester. And I'm bringing this up right now because you need to understand, if you don't finish, if you get an incomplete, an I grade, on the last day of school on December 14th, whether you won't get and you don't fix that I grade and finish the course, next semester you don't get to start the next flying course whoever you are, no matter how you're paying for it. I'm going to say that again. If you get an incomplete grade because you haven't finished your 30 hours with your instructor and finished five hours of solo time, if you, and you get an I grade, an incomplete, and I grades are for it's not your fault you didn't finish it. If you get an I grade, you've got to finish that I grade and turn it into an ABC before you can take the next flying class. So, yeah, we're in here. So... This is going to be, come on in, have a seat, I'll be right with you. i got to finish this point, and then you can have the floor. So what you've got to remember this whole time is that you've got to, you want to fly at a pace that is comfortable and keeps you going, which is at least twice a week. And maybe six times a week is too many for most people. But you need to get done before the next semester starts, or you're going to not fly. So let's just say that happens. Now, January 8th rolls around. It's January 8th of 1919. You still got three more hours to fly for some reason, and you can't finish it. The semester starts up without you. When is that class, private pilot number two, when is it going to get offered again? Take a wild guess. The following January, it's going to put you back an entire school 12 calendar months. So you tell me, how is it important is it to you to get all your flying done and finish that class before the last semester? How is it important to you? It's ridiculously important. The only thing that's more important with that is passing it. You need to pass it and you need to finish it. The way we're, there's a possible to use other instructors. Right now, you're going to get find one instructor, and the plan is to stay with that instructor full semester. If you miss an hour, can you go to Fresno? Outside of Reedley College, you can do whatever you want. I don't have any authority. But none of the flying that you do anywhere has zero impact officially on what happens in your flying course. So, for instance, you brought that that a whole bunch more after Ms. Cicelli and Ms. Fisher have uh, short briefings or introductions. Did you want to have her, you just want to say, yo, 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 what's up? I'll bet, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Do you, either of you ladies, are you familiar with the television show on cable TV from the 1990s called Yo! MTV Raps? Not have you ever seen it. I'm not asking if you've ever seen it. Okay, Mrs. Sally's going like this, so that's like a DJ going. Rrr, rrr. So obviously, obviously she saw a trailer for that TV show. I was making a joke about Yo MTV raps earlier. So Mrs. Sally, if you'd like to stand up, Mrs. Sally is our VA certifying official. If you're using VA benefits, there is no human being on the planet that you want to impress and do what they tell you more than what Mrs. Sally tells you to do. The great thing about Mrs. Selly is that she really cares about doing her job well. She cares about the students using VA benefits that she's working with. And she will do everything within the, the rules to help you get everything done. But when she tells you to do something, you have to do it or you will not be happy. Can you disagree with any of those statements?
students aren't checking their school email and doing what they're told? Surely no flight student would do that. This, oh, the correct response is, I hope no flight students do that, and please stop calling me Shirley. Can anyone name the movie where that came from? The movie. Okay, many, more than one person can name that. If you haven't seen the movie Airplane, then, then uh, I'm going to have to have a quiz in class after the semester starts. Just quoting the, the movie. Ms. Fisher, do, do you have a briefing or you want to say hi? Or I could give you an introduction. Check your student emails for email email account for emails from the admissions and records office and do whatever they tell you. From any of them. Okay. Well, these people have listened to me talk for more than fifty minutes. So I'm going to give everybody in here a break until uh, how about two minutes after, according to that clock. So on your market set, break.